aspect ratios, anamorphic, widescreen, so many choices. How do you choose which aspect ratio to shoot your film in? What are the advantages and the drawbacks? And how do you get that really awesome, super wide cinematic look? We're covering all of that in this episode. Welcome back to Filmmaking for Noobs. This season we've been walking through the entire filmmaking process from start to finish. We just finished a group of episodes that dealt specifically with directing and how to prep your film as a director. Now we're diving into another group of episodes which will deal specifically with issues pertaining to camera and camera department. There are quite a few camera related things that I will not dive into in this season of Filmmaking for Noobs because I've already covered those things in previous episodes. So I will include some links to those previous episodes in the description of this video, including how to properly slate, how to make your shots look more cinematic, and shot composition 101. So if you're pretty new to the film world, go check those episodes out as well as I think you'll really get a lot out of them. So you're about to shoot your next film or your first film, there's a lot of different aspect ratio options available to you. How do you choose which one to use? How do you choose how wide of a widescreen to make your film? And how do you actually go about achieving that? First, a quick definition, aspect ratio is referring to the difference between the width and the height of your image, or more specifically, the width divided by height will give us the aspect ratio. So there are quite a few aspect ratios to choose from, but we're only gonna look at the few most common ones. The first one, an aspect ratio that almost everyone is familiar with is 16 by nine. What this means is that for every 16 units of width, there are nine units of height. So whether it's 16 feet wide by nine feet high or 16 pixels wide by nine pixels high. A normal HDTV or a standard HD computer monitor is likely gonna be 1920 pixels wide by 1080 pixels high or 1920 by 1080. This is a 16 by nine aspect ratio. What you're seeing for Filmmaker for Noobs is shot in 16 by nine. Or a typical 4K television or computer monitor is likely gonna be 3840 by 2160, which is also 16 by nine. The 16 by nine aspect ratio can be referred to as 1.78 to one. For the duration of this episode, we will refer to it in the 1.78 to one aspect ratio, which basically means the same thing. The 16 by nine is a bit more consumer friendly and easier for marketers to market. So the next common aspect ratio we'll look at is 1.85 to one. In the cinema world, this is also referred to as flat. If you are projecting your film in a theater, you're likely only going to have two options to choose from as far as how to present that movie in a theater. You either are going to project it in flat or in scope. Flat is 1.85 to 1 aspect ratio, which is a little bit wider than your home TV, but being projected on a much larger screen. When viewing a film that is shot in 1.85 to 1 on your 1.78 to 1 television at home, you'll notice a small amount of letterboxing, which is the small black bars applied to the top and bottom of the screen. For example, 1.85 to 1 would be cropping about 42 pixels of the height off of an HD image. You'll notice that on my frame right now, we have now cropped off 21 pixels on the top and 21 pixels on the bottom and letterboxed my image or my frame to a 1.85 to 1 frame. The next aspect ratio we'll look at is 2 to 1. 2 to 1 is not an overly common aspect ratio for people to use, but if you are looking for something to give you that bit of a wider look, but not too much of a crazy letterboxing on someone's home television, then two to one definitely is kind of a nice middle ground, a nice safe in between, where it gives you a wider aspect ratio, a wider field of view, but it doesn't disrupt the viewer too much by having such a huge letterbox as like the wider aspect ratios would. Footage shot in two to one would only fill about 960 pixels in height on a standard HD television or about 1920 pixels in height on a 4K television. This means that our 
black bars or letterboxing is getting a bit bigger, but it's not really to the extent yet that it's going to really negatively affect the viewer's experience. And the next wider aspect ratio we're gonna look at is 2.39 to one. 2.39 to one is a much wider aspect ratio, which in the cinema world is referred to as scope. This is your other one of two options when projecting in a cinema. 2.39 to 1 is usually the preferred widescreen option. It's going to give you a really nice wide field of view, allowing you to see much more you know, to the sides. And in the theater, this looks great because the screen is actually built for this aspect ratio and you don't see letterboxing or black bars at the top and bottom. However, for the home viewing experience, this becomes a little bit less favorable, although most people are pretty much used to the super wide look and the really fat black bars on the top and bottom, but it can definitely take away from the viewing experience. Shooting in 239 to 1 can definitely give your film much more of a cinematic look. This is also commonly referred to as anamorphic, but we'll come back to that in a minute. To help you understand the size of the letterboxing, if you're shooting 239 to 1 and then playing it back on a standard 1920 by 1080 television or computer monitor, you're going to be cropping your frame by 276 pixels off the height. Some people do sometimes choose to shoot in 2.35 to 1 or 237 to 1. These are just slightly less wide variations of the 2.39 aspect ratio. Um, obviously, they're a different aspect ratio and there's going to be a couple pixels difference, but they are pretty similar as far as width and aspect ratio goes. If you have one of those nice ultra wide computer monitors, maybe it's a 21.9 monitor, those monitors are actually 2.37 to 1. Uh, 21.9 actually equates to 2.333 something to 1. Um, it's actually 2.37 to 1 if it's the resolution of 2560 by 1080. So with that widescreen monitor, 237 to 1, a movie shot in 239 to 1, you'll get very, very minimal letterboxing, but you'll get a really great viewing experience for anything that is put out in 235 to 1 or 237 to 1. Pillar boxing is when you put black bars on the left and right side of the monitor instead of the top and bottom. So yes, there are other formats and aspect ratios to shoot in, but we're not actually talking about those today. So when you're shooting a film, your four most common options to choose from are going to be 1.78 to 1, also known as 16 by 9, 1.85 to 1, also known as flat, 2 to 1, or 2.39 to 1, also known as scope or anamorphic. So choosing which aspect ratio to use can be difficult. First of all, it does come down to your preference. It comes down to how do you want the viewer to experience your film. What do you want the viewer to see and experience as they're watching this story that you're telling unfold? So how do you want to best present your film to the viewer? What is your ideal viewing circumstance? How wide do you want the field of view to be? How do you wish your film to be enjoyed by the audience? And if you're looking to sell your film as something super cinematic, then the wider the aspect ratio it is, that definitely does help contribute to that. It doesn't automatically make it cinematic, but it does play a role in contributing to that overall cinematic look. However, when choosing an aspect ratio, you should also keep in mind the realities of where your film is going to go, where it will be seen, and what any sort of requirements for deliverables are. Will you be showing your film in theaters? Will be screening at a number of film festivals? Is it going to be presented on television? Those are things to think about when choosing an aspect ratio to shoot in, or at least having an idea of how you're going to protect for other aspect ratios. Protecting for another aspect ratio means that even though you are shooting in one aspect ratio, you're paying very close attention, usually with some kind of guidelines on your monitors or on the camera uh, when you're shooting, to make sure that you are keeping all of your action within a certain safe zone so that at some point later in post, you can re crop or adjust your, your frame size to fill a different sized aspect ratio. For example, if you're shooting in 2.39 to 1, but you're also protecting for the standard 16.9 aspect ratio, then this means that you'll be shooting 2.39 to 1, you'll be framing everything for 2.39 to 1, but you'll be keeping all of your action inside a more of a safe zone between your 16.9 cutoff um, so that your action isn't going too far out 
to the wide edges of the screen. This way later in post you can then create a 16 by 9 version of your film by cropping off the left and right side, still having it look like it is framed properly and composed well uh, and not chopping off any actors faces or any important action. Uh, that way you are protecting for 16 9 while still shooting 239 to 1. Some films and TV shows are shooting in 239 to 1, but also protecting for 169, protecting for 43, and protecting for vertical video. This is so that they can have their original film as it's meant to be pre presented in 239 to 1, but they can also readjust things for someone's 16 by 9 home video or even for older 43 televisions, and they're also protecting for vertical video so that uh, they can create ads or show clips of it on platforms like Snapchat. Snapchat. So regardless of which aspect ratio you choose, you should heavily consider where the majority of your audience is going to be viewing this film. And if you're shooting on anything wider than 1.78 to 1, especially if you are shooting 239 to 1, I would highly recommend at least protecting for 16 by 9, if not protecting for anything else. Now let's say you choose to go the 2.39 to 1 super wide aspect ratio. It's going to look amazing and cinematic if done properly, but the question is, how do you actually do that? How do you shoot 239 to 1? How do you pull that off? How do you make it work? So we're going to look at three ways that you can shoot on your next film in the ultra-wide 2.39 to 1 aspect ratio. The first method is by simply setting your camera to 2.39 to 1 aspect ratio. Some cameras, though not all, do have the ability to just simply choose an aspect ratio or a frame size within the camera settings somewhere. Uh, usually this is the higher end cameras, Reds, Alexas um, will have this setting, but if your camera does have that, that obviously is a really easy way to go. When you're choosing the 239 to 1 setting in your camera settings, this is not actually making your frame any larger or wider, all it's doing is simply cropping the sensor. So you're not actually capturing the entire sensor's area, you're only capturing or recording to your media a cropped portion of your camera's sensor. The downside to this is that if you are protecting for 16 by 9, then when you do crop off the left and right side of your frame later on in post, you're going to end up using only a very small portion of your camera's overall sensor, which means a large majority of your camera sensor is kind of going to waste. So imagine a 16 by 9 4K frame 3840 by 2160. If we're shooting in 239 to 1, then our frame size is going to be 3840 by 1606. This is great for 4K viewing and presenting it in the 239 to 1 aspect ratio. You're using your entire 3840 by 1606 frame size. You're getting all the information and presenting it to the viewer in that 239 to 1 aspect ratio. But if you're protecting for 169 and then you go and create a 169 version of this film, our end result is going to be 2855 by 1606 pixels. This means that in order to present it on a 4K medium or platform, we then have to upscale to 4K, which does lead to some image degradation, and we're using a very small portion of the camera's 4K sensor, because out of our camera's 3840 by 2160 4K sensor, we're only using 2855 by 1606 of those pixels for our end result 169 version of the film. So our second option, which will allow you to make more of your camera sensor and is also necessary if your camera doesn't allow for a 239 to 1 uh, aspect ratio setting, is to simply shoot in the full 16 by 9 or the 1.78 to 1 aspect ratio and then crop it later in post. So if your goal is to present your film in the 2.39 to 1 aspect ratio, but you're also wanting to protect for 178 to 1, then shooting in the full 1.78 to 1 aspect ratio and planning to crop later in post is almost in a sense like reverse protecting your image. The reason why this option leads to a better quality image for your 16.9 version down the road or for a protected aspect ratio down the road compared to the first option that I presented is let's say once again we're shooting on a camera with a 4K sensor that is 3840 pixels wide by 2160 pixels high. If you're now shooting in the full 16.9 aspect ratio, you're now capturing your camera's entire 16 by 9 sensor onto your media Later in post, you'll crop this to 239 to 1, giving you the same 
3840 by 1606 frame size as you would have had in option number one. However, when you later go to create a 16 by 9 version of your film that you may have been protecting for all along the way, instead of cropping off the left and right side, you can actually make use of the entire sensor 3840 by 2160 and just undo the crop that you applied for the ultra wide aspect ratio. If you're going that route, there are a few things to keep in mind though throughout the filmmaking process. First of all, make sure that you are compensating for the 239 to 1 crop that you will end up doing later in post. You want to make sure that you're planning for this 239 to 1 crop while you're shooting so you're not framing anything too high or too low in the frame and then cutting that off when you crop it. Most professional monitors or cinema cameras do give you the ability to add guidelines onto your monitor so that you can see where the 239 to 1 ratio is. This way your monitor may be a 16-9 monitor, you may be viewing the entire 16-9 image, but you'll have markers on the image showing you where your 239 to 1 frame size ends and begins. You would then frame everything inside of these markers as if you're composing your 239 to 1 frame within the guidelines. However, if you are still protecting for 178 to 1 or 185 to 1, then do keep in mind that the area outside of your guidelines are still hot. What that means is that the light that is outside of your guideline that you think is safe because it's going to be cropped out is not actually safe if you can still see it in your image right above frame. If your monitor does not have the option to add the guidelines or the safety marks then you'll want to actually physically measure out your monitor and use some thin tape to make your own guidelines so that you can have a good understanding of what you'll be seeing in the final result once you crop to the 2.39 to 1 aspect ratio. If you do forget to plan for this while you're shooting and you don't take into account how much you'll be cropping off of the final image, then you're gonna end up either cutting off actors' faces or cutting out important information or important pieces of the action, or you're just gonna make your composition look really bad. I once shot a film in 239 to 1. We had red cameras, we had everything set up properly to compensate for the ultra wide aspect ratio. We had no issues whatsoever during principal photography. And then months later, I went back and shot an added scene that the writer decided to add uh, after we finished filming and we shot it on a different camera in 16 by 9. I completely forgot to take into account the 239 to 1 crop and it looked really great in the 16 9 frame but then when I got into post and started editing it and realized I had to crop my image it ended up making my nice 20 mil shots look more like a 40 mil and it just wasn't really that great anymore. So lesson learned, always keep in mind what your final project is going to look like, what the final frame size is, and, and be sure to compensate for that as you're filming. And lastly, the third way to shoot in the 239 to 1 aspect ratio is by shooting anamorphic. Anamorphic is achieved by using an anamorphic lens. An anamorphic lens is a specialty type of lens which distorts the image, compressing it or squeezing it horizontally to allow a wider field of view to be captured on your normal size sensor. This way it's actually squeezing a 239 to 1 frame size into a smaller, let's say 1.78 to 1 sensor size. You're capturing all the data that you would normally have captured for a 239 to 1 image. Uh, it does look really squeezed and compressed if you were to play it back without compensating for it or you would project it in a theater using an anamorphic projection lens, which then does the opposite to distort the light by de-squeezing it to fill the entire widescreen. The advantage to shooting anamorphic is it is a truly cinematic experience and gives you that truly cinematic look. It also utilizes the entirety of your camera's sensor. You're capturing the full frame of your camera's sensor onto your media, and when you do end up cropping it later for 16 by 9, you're not losing any of your image quality and you're just chopping off the left and right side, but you're still maintaining the full height of your sensor. Shooting anamorphic gives you a really unique bokeh and lens flare that is usually only possible by shooting anamorphic. That's because that this is created as a result of how the lens distorts light in order to compress the image. The disadvantage, however, to shooting anamorphic is that it often becomes much more expensive to go this route and depending on your post workflow and where things are going, it can also become a much more complicated workflow. 
Anamorphic lenses are usually quite expensive to purchase and usually much more expensive to rent compared to normal non-anamorphic lenses. But there are also some lower budget options out there for the low budget filmmaker who wants to at least give it a shot. In the next episode of Filmmaking for Noobs, we will dive a bit more in depth into the world of shooting anamorphic. And we'll also look at a handful of low budget anamorphic options for shooting anamorphic on a budget.